Okay, uh, I think we can get started now. So, hello everyone. Welcome to this session about uh, live updating. So, my name is Fan, and I'm from ByteDance. So, today I'd like to talk about our work in uh, KVM host kernel live update, specifically how we handle the IOMMU uh, state during KEXEC reboot, which is an uh, interesting problem if we have the VFI or PCI pass through devices attached to our virtual machines. So, uh, in this talk, I will uh, do three parts. First is the introduction. Uh, we will look at the background of the problem and the existing techniques and with a simple comparison. We will also re review the VFL PCI uh, in order to understand how we can make it work with live updating. Then in the next part, we will see how we do live updating with the VFL PCI devices and what changes we need here. So we will discuss what are the stateful parts in the process and how we preserve their states. Uh, we will also see it will involve both the device status and the IOMMU tables, as well as, uh, of course, the guest memory. Then finally, we will take a look at the proof of concept work and the future plan. So uh, starting from the introduction, so what we are trying to do here the main motivation is about updating the running software uh, on your hypervisor host, including the VMM and the kernel. Because um, obviously, as a developer of the uh, private or public cloud, we want to make sure the production environment is always kept up to date, uh, delivering the highest performance and free from security or functional bugs. Uh, but in order to do that, there is a, a kind of a, a difficult problem to solve. Because as we know, as a complex system like the hypervisor, it's hard to just write the perfect code in the first place and deploy it uh, on the machine and hope it will run forever until the hardware dies. So something will come up. So we always face the challenge of some high priority security issues to fix or some functional bugs that are affecting the customer experience. Or maybe we just even to introduce some new features uh, or maybe performance improvements on the running systems. And uh, thanks to the nature of virtualization, it's not impossible, as we know. So there are two well-known ways to reduce the cost of doing such upgrades, both the, in terms of engineering or for the cost of the customer side. So they are known as live migration and live update. So let's see how they fit in the problem. Uh, starting from live migration, we all know that live migration is to move the one, one guest from one host to another uh, between different slots. And this is quite a powerful approach because it can solve both the hardware and software issue while doing this. Because we can uh, uh, obviously migrate from a broken hardware to a healthy hardware or migrate from an old version of hypervisor to a, to a new version. But it's, it's in practice very tricky to do it very well because saving and loading the state of the VM and copying it over network to another machine is usually very heavy operations as we have seen in many other talks because memory is streamed across uh, between two machines and virtual block devices we need to take care of sharing them or mirroring them over or maybe we also need to care about the complex um, network data plane coordination just to keep the VPC working after the migration. So there's always a few challenges associated with live migration. Uh, it can be the resource and the time needed to do the operation. So you always need to allocate roughly two times different resources. And the time that, uh, that can be plenty if you want to uh, move on VM to another. Uh, but if the guest is under high load, you always have the problem of converge. And uh, this can be solved in different approaches. But as soon as we enable post copy, the error recovery can also be tricky. So live update, on the other hand, it's, it's different, but also can be seen as a very special case of live migration because uh, in the previous slide, live migration moves a VM from one host to another, but in live update, uh, it's always that the VM stays on the same host. 
but just move from one slot to another. As you can see in the picture, on the right, we have a new slot in the square uh, with a higher version of VMM. So while we do the live update, uh, effectively we are moving to a higher version of the VMM. So we can live update uh, what we want. So the important difference here between live update and live migration is that live update allows us to avoid a lot of data copying in the process by taking advantage of the fact that both slots now run on the same host so they can access the same set of hardware and software resources. For example, the memory allocated can be, uh, uh, the guest pages can be sh uh, shared or handed over between the old and the new VMM processes. Uh, similar to the virtual storage, um, it's because apparently the new VMM can easily access the same storage as well. The same applies to virtual network, etc. So much less change is, or operation is needed here in order to finish the live update operation. So therefore, live update is really considered a much more efficient um, approach and can be very beneficial for our downtime, which is a, a big deal for the customers. Um, and as well, we can see that we don't need as much as extra resources uh, to be allocated in the process just as a temporary uh, buffer or in the, uh, in the transitional state. But live update is also not perfect. It, it also comes with a few challenges. Uh, so first of all, in order to avoid allocating the extra resource in, um, in addition to what's already running, we uh, try hard to just pass the resources around between the old one and the new slot. So the details of each resource type can influence how we implement this. And it's really depend on the choice of the configuration and the backend type, uh, such as your virtual network implementation, uh, your guest memory allocation, and your pass-through device status. And all this can add to the complexity of implementing live update in your production. And we always have the, a big question mark that if we can also do the host kernel live update uh, while making this happen. So it can make things more complicated if we are adding all this together. So uh, to find the answer to the question about live updating host kernel, let's first take a look at how live update currently works uh, in a few different uh, approaches and this, uh, this uh, slide shows a very simple uh, naive implementation and we use the existing live migration facilities in QEMU to do that um, as a user file as the migration destination. So this is very straightforward and robust uh, as long as the migration, migrate command can work. Now you have your state on the disk so we can do anything including reboot the uh, physical machine to a new kernel or even use a different QEMU version before we initialize the, before we initiate the uh, resume operation to load the state back. Uh, but this naive implementation also copies all the memory, which is not good. So it doesn't really meet our expectation or give much of the promised benefit of live updating. So it's, it's definitely not hard to improve the situation here. Um, and the community is also working actively on this. The key is to avoid uh, largely the copying of the guest memory, um, but just to transfer it from the old, old slot or load it from somewhere else. Uh, and uh, on the mailing list, uh, uh, Stephen uh, Sister from uh, Oracle has posted the checkpoint and the restart work. Uh, the patch is set to enable efficient live update uh, using uh, QEMU a live migration framework, which I will um, explain shortly. Uh, and also in addition to efficiency, the CPR patch series also supports VFL PCI devices. So yeah, let's have a quick overview of how VFL PCI devices work so we have a better, a better idea of how it fits in the uh, big picture. Um, VFL PCI is um, most essentially, the, the control path of IOMMU status 
uh, exposed by the host kernel so that VMM have, have some control of how IO MMU should behave. So it, it um, eventually allows the guest to use a, a function on the physical device, a VF or PF uh, of a PCR device by um, the, the VMM setting up DMA mappings and interrupt relaying at the host side. So uh, the DMA and the interrupt mapping tables for the IOMMU are like they are still fully managed by the host kernel, uh, but they are usually initialized during the guest start, but not changed ever again. So therefore, we can observe a stable mapping once the guest has started. So both the guest physical address space and also the host physical address space uh, and the mapping between them, uh, as well as the DMAR mapping, which is just basically the same translation. They don't usually change once it's established, unless you do some uh, special op uh, operations such as hot plugging, etc. But in the uh, most basic case, case, it can be seen as a fairly static state. So with that, um, we can also look at how the CPR approach uh, supports VFL PCI in its different operation modes. So there are basically uh, two modes, both supporting VFL PCI with different restrictions. So the first mode is called the reboot mode, which um, namely you can uh, optionally reboot your host kernel after you have saved your state somewhere. So uh, what happens here is uh, a guest agent is installed and it uh, receives the request to uh, live update uh, cooperatively and then the guest agent will uh, ask the uh, guest driver to stop and, and discard any state as if the, uh, the device is uh, disabled. So in the process, the, the device and the driver both discard the status and only resync up after the uh, loading back the state and the guest uh, starts to run again. So this approach makes sure that the lost IOMU state uh, during the kernel reboot it doesn't affect the guest operation because we know the device is inactive, nothing could happen. And after the reinitialize of the guest driver, everything can start from uh, start over. So um, in, in comparison, the, there's also another mode in CPR uh, live update called uh, exec. So exec means what you can do is you can exec your old QEMU into a new binary. So this is obviously, there's no host kernel reboot allowed. It's not possible to exec across a rebooted kernel. So in order to support VFL PCR here, um, we can preserve the file descriptors uh, with, some, with a few uh, introduced uh, changes, uh, especially uh, to clear all the FD, CLO, EXEC flag so that the VFL PCI related flags will be preserved and uh, everything suddenly still exists uh, when you have a new QEMU binary. And there are also two uh, VFIO uh, operations added to make sure the DMA status is also uh, co consistent. So a quick recap of the different approaches um, and focusing a little bit on VFIO PCI. Uh, Looking at the table, it seems we always have to trade something in if we want VFL PCI in the picture and uh, do some live update. So is there anything else or is there something we can do better? I think the answer is probably yes. That's the uh, topic of this talk. And we are focusing on this corner. So in the CPR reboot mode, so can we um, avoid the guest modification and remove the guest agent so it doesn't shut down the device beforehand. So um, before we go to the solution, let's take another look at what's involved here. So in the mode, if we didn't install the guest, what would happen? What would go wrong? There are a few things that are definitely are causing troubles if we were to just uninstall the guest agent. So first, uh, starting from the QEMU, the old QEMU shutting down, it will clear and tear down the VFL container, which will uh, effectively 
drop all the DMA mappings. Uh, so the IOMM tables are no longer there. And the second step, if we reboot, the device shuts down in kernel, which will call into the PCI code, PCI core code, and then it will also reset the pass-through device. Uh, and there's a new kernel starting up, probing and resetting all the dis uh, discovered PCI devices, uh, and including the pass-through device as well. That also makes the device state inconsistent. And also the new QEMU will uh, also start on the new kernel and the new VFL container will uh, be created and the device attached to the um, address space. So in this process, there's also the device reset. So uh, every single step of, of this process will make the hardware state inconsistent from the guest driver's knowledge. And there will be obviously IO error from the guest as if the device is broken. So, um, put it another way, we want the device to look exactly the same as before, in the same state. So, that means the device mustn't be reset, and anything written to the config space or bars must also be uh, still ineffective as well. So, uh, and implicitly, this also includes the IOMM mappings, uh, not just the moment of resuming, but throughout the whole process, all the time. Because imagine a network card will continue to receive packets from outside uh, over the network. So it would want to do DMA into the RX buffer, which is sitting in the uh, guest pages. So how do we achieve this? It sounds like a lot. Um, but I think the, the key in a nutshell, which is the, um, the topic of today, is to how do we do a, a static page, like a static page allocation in order to prevent all this state to go wrong. And the static here basically means two things uh, specifically. One is the guest pages are static um, before and after reboot. And the other point is to make DMA mappings static and also maintain that state all the time. So um, apart from that, there is also the interrupt remapping. Um, but th this is not uh, critical because it can be disabled and discarded before the uh, reboot and re reestablish later. Uh, and, and as a consequence, we need a notify, uh, which can be a spurious uh, RQ when we have the guest up. This is to, um, this is to, to counter the, the potential that maybe there is a lost interrupt in the process. So with that, let's see how we can manage the state, static page allocations. So first, uh, let's look at uh, the guest RAM pages. Um, so here the approach, as you can see, there's basically three parts. Uh, we make use of the uh, DAX support in Linux. Uh, and uh, we, what we do is we mark a, a physical address area as an NVDIM type. Uh, note that here we are not really changing the volatile property of the memory itself, but just to reuse the kernel NVDIM framework to manage and use the pages, um, especially using the DAX capabilities. So in the first line here, I'm reserving an area of two gigabytes starting at six, uh, because I, I know in this particular configuration on my machine, this range is, uh, is some DRAM that I can use. Uh, so once we boot the kernel with this parameter, which, which is our KVM host, the two gig area will now no longer be allocated for anything else. So then, in order to assign this memory to the guest, we create a, a, a DAX device uh, with the ndctl command line here, and we will then uh, have access to a new file under the devfs uh, slash dev slash dax 1.0 which is a character device, but it's, it can be used to mem map, uh, mem map into the guest. So using the QEMU's memory backend file option, QEMU can now pick this up and map it, map it into the guest address space. So this is done both before and after the live update create exact reboot, uh, so that the, the, the GPA address and the HPA address the, and the mapping uh, is essentially the same. And then, um, with some 
guest memory covered, let's also look at the IOML page tables. So in order to do this, um, we introduced a, a, a static page allocator called KRAM in the host kernel. Uh, it, it works similarly, um, like on a reserved RAM region, uh, like the DAX idea uh, before. Uh, but this time we are marking in the user EA20 table a new type number specifically uh, reserving for this allocator, this small kernel module, and the corresponding syntax is a, a new mark in the map map uh, command line argument. So this allocator is designed so that all the metadata as well as the data, uh, or, or the metadata can be thought as the super block of a file system sitting on PMAN. So all this information are all in the reserved pages so that the state survives KEXAC. That is because KEXAC doesn't really uh, blanketly uh, clear all the pages. So things like this, will, the data will still be there. It will not be reset. So this module exports a very simple API. Uh, to, uh, in order for other parts to request for, for pages in the uh, reserved area. So the first API is a fixed allocation with an error type and uh, an index into, the, into a small sub area that are passed as the parameters. So this request goes to a predefined static layout in that region. So it's not, it's not flexible design, it's not dynamic, it's static, it's a hard coding basically. So this will return a predictable offset into the reservation for a given, um, any given purpose. Um, so, and then second API is a dynamic allocation and free function pair uh, based on a simple bitmap implementation. And then this can be used to allocate some pages dynamically, but they, uh, the, the idea is they are referenced from the fixed pages, which, which are the root. So with such an API, um, I patched the Intel IOMM code as a driver a little bit in the host kernel to make use of the, the static pages. The change is shown here. So it will um, depend on this new option, but if it's enabled, then it starts to allocate any um, relevant pages from the KRAN. So this is a relatively simple search and replace thanks to how Intel IOMM driver works currently. So I basically re replaced a function call uh, that uh, originally is using alloc page table page uh, with this uh, new API KRAM get fixed page for the root pages, which are like the, the entry for any IOMM lookups. And then in all other places, such as the actual uh, page table for the uh, DME mapping, uh, we use the KRAM alloc page, alloc page. And these pages are referenced by the root page. So with these changes, we know that the addresses of the IOMM page tables, the data structures are stable, and their, uh, their data in the tables are also, like thanks to the fact that guest RAM is always uh, static, this is also stable. Um, and then uh, a little bit more changes in the VFI OPSI part. Uh, the goal is to avoid the state change that can break the guest driver as we saw earlier, the, the virus uh, device reset, etc. So uh, we still want to quit the old QEMU and reboot the old, ghost, uh, old, old host. So we must do a few things uh, both in QEMU and the VFL PCI kernel code differently to keep the guest happy. Uh, and the concept is here organized behind a new operation mode to support this scenario in, in a few layers uh, called raw mode. So from the VFL PCI, we are adding this flag to control the behavior of the kernel. And the QEMU will use this flag if it is um, live updating. Um, and it asks the VFL PCI driver to skip a few things, including the bus master bit reset during software state changes and also avoid uh, any device reset uh, and config space initialization uh, similarly, et cetera. Uh, and finally, so QEMU will uh, also take care of updating the interrupt status uh, by masking and unmasking to avoid any inconsistency uh, interrupt um, events and the consequences in the process. Because interrupts, if we don't um, disable it, 
the DMA can still happen if there is some activity triggered from outside, such as the incoming packets. Uh, and then there will be interrupts from the hardware, which the host kernel may not be able to handle because it is in the middle of k-exec reboot and things are not ready, there's no proper handler set up. So after we disable this in, in QEMU, we can re-enable it after the guest is restored and everything is in place and ready. Uh, at the cost of, we need one um, spurious notify, which is to um, fix the problem of losing the, uh, the some real notification in the middle. So that the guest driver knows it's time to look at the completion queue or, or events queue to pick up any uh, new requests or new events. So this uh, uh, covers a few parts and that summarizes the key changes that, um, we have done so far. So there are definitely more to it, such as um, uh, hot plugin devices and maybe even the VFL PCI kernel state is it's not stable, um, it's not co consistent, but it, it, it's not exposed in the simplest operations, but if we uh, do more things, it can have some trouble. But so much more work is required to make this complete and working um, and, and correct. Um, but here uh, for this talk, let's see if the idea behind this thing works at all in principle. So we have put together a POC and uh, uh, taken care of some of the other details that we uh, won't have time to cover in this talk, especially how virtual network can be a tricky thing to, to do. Um, and, and by the way, uh, Usama Arif, uh, also uh, my colleague, he gave a talk about Vertile we host user last week in DPDK user space, which is quite relevant and interesting for live update, uh, especially if we have a, uh, we host user backends. So if you are interested, feel free to come to um, say hi and chat with us about this or uh, related topics. Um, so back to the POC. Uh, I, I tested uh, basically in Nest KVM uh, just because it's, uh, it's very uh, easy to work with and doesn't uh, really depend on specific um, machine that can be used to play all this. But um, we will move to that later. So here, our hypervisor to be live update will work on a, 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 KV, a QEMU that enables nested virtualization. So the hypervisor to be live update is running in L1. Uh, and then I enable the vir uh, virtual IOMMU. So uh, the virtual E1000DE, which is emulated by the uh, outmost uh, QEMU, can be passed through to the L2 guest. Uh, and the kernel and the QEMU in L1 are subject uh, for uh, live update here. Uh, and they are modified, uh, as, as I mentioned before, to support the live update process. Um, however, the QEMU and the kernel in L0 and L2, uh, the guest image in, in the uh, innermost guest, they are not modified. And they don't have any guest agent to do cooperative live update. Um, so here is the uh, pr uh, process live up to live update. So step one, I start L2 with VFL PCI, pass through the device uh, into the uh, L2 guest. Uh, so then I can stage uh, my new kernel and the init RAM disk with this k-exact uh, standard operation uh, in L1. Uh, and then in, the, in L1, I also can now save the states using the uh, QMP command introduced in, in CPR work. Uh, it will create a file that contains the state. So I write this ta uh, file in a ta format written to a uh, DEX block dev, which is also reserved RAM, but this is pres um, preserved across the exact reboot. So it can load it quickly from the memory. And then I issue reboot in L1, so the kernel will reboot. Um, and once the kernel is up, I can start L L2 uh, again using a new QEMU uh, and load state from the uh, uh, DAX block device, which is done directly in the new kernel in using a custom init process because that's the fastest way to do anything in your kernel once it's up and ready. 
So this is just to reduce the overall uh, downtime because we, we tried and wanted to see how fast we can do this. And here is the result. Um, so the result is the, the, the guest still works, the uh, pass-through device still works. The, the packets are seen again after around 160 milliseconds, uh, although the time must be taken with a grain of salt because it depends on the size of everything and the configuration. Um, but the result is positive because we could live update the, uh, for both the host kernel, the KVM kernel, and also our QNU. Uh, and, and the chart here is the SVG I generated just to break down what, what's taking time, and the yellow in the middle is the most, mostly about the new kernel booting itself, uh, and the red after this process on the right is loading the state and uh, setting a few things up, and the red on the left is, uh, is, uh, is a mostly k-exec and saving state. So, um, yeah, that's uh, mostly uh, all of the work. And going forward, we, we definitely plan to do more uh, coding, code cleanup, and maybe handling corner cases and, and errors and things. Um, and as I mentioned, we want to test on some uh, more serious, um, beefy bare metal that has server configuration uh, with many resources, etc. Uh, as well as try to integrate with some control plane to, to prove that this can like um, fit in the uh, private public cloud live updating scenarios. Uh, and also the AMD and ARM support uh, that need more work because the IOM MMA is different in different uh, platforms. Um, and and uh, finally, the, the downtime um, of the k-exec process and new kernel boot, we do have some other ideas to optimize that as well because it matters for the uh, customer and the workload. Um, and with that, I think that uh, it's from my side. And thanks. So any questions? If not, okay, so thank you for your time and hope you have a good rest of the KVM forum.